Hi there, welcome Jerry Usher, Debbie Giorgiani, kicking off another episode of Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. We're going to be talking about sports today, but not just sports uh, for its own sake. We're going to be talking about how sports to life, how it kind of mirrors life, if you will, and really, in a sense, is a metaphor for life. And Debbie, I know you've been involved in sports, especially golf, and so have I. So this is something I'm, I, I, w- I, would, I would gamble to say that we both have learned a lot from throughout our lives. Oh, I agree, Jerry. And I was reflecting on this topic uh, last night, really thinking about it. I shared with our listeners on previous shows that I was very involved in my early years in golf. And and I was looking at the game of golf, Jerry, and I've I've heard it said so many times that uh, golf is truly, the game of golf is truly a metaphor for life. You know, there really isn't another sport that I know of that where a, a person's integrity is truly tested on the golf course. I mean, it, that's why so many business deals, Jerry, are, are, are made <laughs> on the golf course. Seriously, because, you know, they say that if you really want to know what a person is like in life, take them on the golf course because they will share their same, you know, personality and demeanor and their choices. And do they cheat at golf? Do they not cheat? You know, how, how do they play fair? What is their kind of personality? And I really learned a lot. So maybe that's what helped me in, in life. I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm curious to see where the show is going to go today because maybe I'll learn more about it. And, and, and who knows? I, I, I practicing so much, um, playing all the time, uh, growing up, you know, practicing, hitting balls constantly. Maybe it did me some good. Well, as always, your takes drive the show, 1-800-585-9396, 1-800-585-9396. I will personally say that if losing teaches one lessons about life, then I could write several textbooks because uh, my my high school football teams and basketball teams were not very good. But what about you, our listeners? Did you participate in sports? Maybe you still do. People like Dr. Ray Garendi is still very much uh, an active softball player in a league. Maybe you still kind of keep that that sports engine running in your life. We want to know what you take away from sports and that you can apply to your life, including even the spiritual life. Maybe you've Mm -hmm. had experience learning life lessons while playing sports Uh, how did you handle the excitement of winning or what about losing did losing teach you anything and then we can talk about your kids as well because Debbie it is just today uh, the involvement of kids in sports I think far surpasses anything that that I thought we played a lot of sports kids today are just really saturated in them uh, you know, I agree with that. When I was growing up, there was maybe one sport you focused on and a couple others you played kind of, you know, just casually at, at school. But now you, you see kids in, in three and four and five, even six sports. I mean, that's, is that too it's your, much? It's your rent. It's, yeah. I mean, but is that too much? I mean, what, at what point? balance you know let's look at that maybe how you know I think sports should definitely be be a positive thing in a person's life I think it should impact them in a positive way I know it so much so much by playing golf and also I played softball and and basketball when I was a little taller and um and (laughs) so (laughs) true I got shorter um but here's the thing is that sports I think is it's important for us to get a good handle on it early on especially with our children so that sports can be something that is 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 truly a blessing in life and not not a curse you know so this is going to be a great show well, and we have, uh, for example, St. Paul in the Bible talks about sports on a number of occasions. His famous passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, where he talks about all of the athletes competing for the prize, but the, the, the prize really ultimately goes only to one. He says, so run the race so as to win. So again, uh, we uh, look forward to your involvement, our listeners, to take two with Jerry and Debbie at one 800 Five eight five nine three nine six one eight hundred five eight five nine three nine six. Debbie and I are excited because today we're going to welcome a special guest to the program. Right now, his name is Justin Spire. Justin served in the Marines from nineteen ninety one to ninety five, then was drafted by the Chicago Cubs late in the fifty sixth round, which proves that God does big things in small people. 
uh, those who are maybe overlooked for uh, for a period of time. He spent 15 years in professional baseball, 10 of those in the big leagues, pitching in over 600 games. And since retiring, he's worked on the board of athletes in action for two years, still gives his testimony to college students, and also speaks for a fellowship of Christian athletes and to military youth programs. Uh, in addition, he speaks to a number of local Catholic youth groups, and he was recently married to Brittany, and they are expecting a son. Justin, it is great to have you on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. How are you? Jerry, Debbie, how you doing? Pleasure and honor to be here on the radio with you guys today. Oh, Justin, thank you so much for making the time. You are getting ready to prepare to welcome your son into the world, and, and we're just so blessed that you can be with us uh, today and share with our listeners maybe uh, your sports experience or what you would like to impart to people listening right now that, you know, a sports is, is a big part of, of their daily lives, and, and, maybe, and you've lived through it. Now you're in, uh, I guess you want to call it retirement, Justin. So how can, maybe what can you share with us today? Well, you know, I, uh, first of all, I was listening to you guys as I was, uh, as you guys were, uh, the sports discussion. And I think I'm going to have to spend a few years in purgatory for kicking my, uh, my ball out of a sand trap. <laughs> <laughs> See, you can learn a lot about people on the golf course, Justin. That's right. <laughs> in my younger, in my younger, more sinful years, I, uh, I probably wasn't. I probably wasn't the most honest golfer, but um, my brothers can definitely attest to that. But uh, what a great show you guys are having today! The similarities and the parallels between sports and life, between um, faith and uh, sports. I mean, it's a it's a great it's a great topic. Um, before I speak, before I do anything, I always like to pray. Do you guys mind praying with me for a second? Absolutely not. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time on the air. Dear Lord, thank you so much that uh, we can proclaim your name and your direction um, openly in this great country of ours. The work that you've done in my life, may, uh, may you use my testimony in any way you see fit today, dear Lord, and may your Holy Spirit work through me, and may it be your words and not mine. And we pray all this in your Holy Son's name, dear Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Justin, Amen. before you continue, I just want to remind our listeners of how they can get on the air. And actually, you can you can chat with Justin Spire today, a former Major League Baseball player, and ask him to help to form his athletic career and vice versa. And if you've got kids who are aspiring to be athletes, this is a great opportunity for you to call in. Justin will be with us for the program here. So our number is one 800 Five eight five nine three nine six one eight hundred five eight five nine three nine six. In fact, Justin, if you this is right about the the point of the show where we take our first break, and I, I just want to make sure that when you get started, we don't have to interrupt that for for anything because I know our listeners are going to be hanging on your words. So uh, if you don't mind, Justin, we'll take our first break right now. That okay with you? Out, yeah, outstanding. I'm I'm here, no problem. All right, 1-800-585-9396. It's Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Pleased to welcome Justin Spire to our program today. Years in Major League Baseball. Uh, do your kids, are they like over the top involved? Do you feel it's too much? What about kids who don't want to be involved? How do you get them to be more active in life? one 800 9396 Or send us an email with your take at take2 at EWTN.com. Uh, started drinking beer on Saturday nights, uh, sleeping in on Sunday mornings, missing mass, and it just became a pattern and continued. Without God, I don't know where I'd be right now. I know the importance of the Eucharist. I know the importance of the sacraments that I didn't know at a young age. I follow God's will because my desire is to get to heaven. Our, our lives are rich and full by being members of the church. If you've been away from the Catholic Church, visit catholicscomehome.org. We're asking folks about marriage. Marriage makes me think of sports. You know, teamwork, dedication. Okay, let's see what people say. Let's say your marriage is a sport. What sport would it be? Basketball. Surfing. It have to be a team sport. A lot of back and forth. A lot of people watching. So how many people are influenced by your marriage? Hundreds. You really think about the ripple effect. It's like a wave. <laughs> <laughs> Want to improve your marriage? For ideas, go to foryourmarriage.org. A message from the Catholic Church. Oh, 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 oh,
Thank you, friends, for tuning in to Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. We've got a great discussion going on right now and a great guest with us. We're talking about sports as a metaphor for life. Justin Spire is with us, a major league ball player, and we are so excited he's going to be with us to uh, um, take and to also share his experiences about being in the major league and what he has learned. So if you want to jump in on this discussion, call now at 1-800-585-9396. Justin, you, you, um, you shared such a beautiful opening prayer to you being with us on Take Two. I want It just makes me think of the um, picture that we posted on TakeTwoShow.com of you, um, I believe it was coming off the mound and you were pointing up. Can you share with us what's the background? I understand that um, there's that's a famous picture and I understand there's a story behind it. Oh, yeah. You know, my whole life, my whole baseball career, uh, coming up, I would put a cross in the mound in JMJ before every outing thanking God privately um, that I was able to pitch in the major leagues and then thanking him after our, after the outing, good or bad. Good or bad, you know, we prepare ourselves in any sport. Um, we work, we work hard, and then at the end of the day, we leave leave the results to God, whether good or bad, you know, because for Him be the glory, whether whether we win or lose the game. Um, and you know, I wasn't really walking with Christ um, early in my career. I had a major conversion story, a Saint Augustine type, if you will, story. At 33, the Holy Spirit sort of came into my life and said He. You know, he wanted me to be a part of every, he wants to be a part of every aspect of my life. I was holding him at bay in my relationships. I was holding him at bay in my financial life. Um, you know, but I wanted him, I wanted him there for my health and my livelihood and my family life. And, and, uh, but, you know, he, he said, I want to be a part of every aspect of your life. So as St. Peter sort of washed me, washed me, Lord, you know, from my head to my toes. So I gave all of my life to Christ at 33, the same year he died and rose. And um, I was going through a difficult time in my life. I was struggling with depression. I was struggling with some things and uh, going through a major conversion. I was thinking about quitting baseball at the time. And I said, Lord, if I'm going to play baseball, I'm going to play it only for your glory. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I came back after a certain period of time off and um, I, and I needed a miracle. Um, I, and uh, I came into a game and I strike struck three guys out, you know, significant, three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I, for one brief moment, pointed up to God, and uh, and I had my hand down. I put it up for two seconds and pointed to Him, thanking Him for the success I had on the field that day, knowing that I was going to continue to play baseball for His glory. And uh, um, I've never done that publicly. You see a lot of athletes pointing up right now, and it's great that they're giving God the glory. Um I never did that. I was really private with my faith, but at that moment, I wanted to give God the glory. So out of 600 and some odd major league games, I, I pointed up once, and mm. someone got that on someone got that on picture on a picture. And I've been post retirement, I've been able to speak to probably over 30 um, and give my testimony and and tell them God has a plan for them. He has a purpose for them. You know, he could do big things in small people. He draws straight with crooked lines. And so just giving my testimony and talking to the youth of our country and trying to deposit seeds of greatness and uh, seeds of faith into their young lives so that way they can come to know Christ earlier in their, in their life so that way they can make a bigger impact for his glory. And I think what you just said there, Justin, is so important. We give away what God gives to us. I, I've often thought in my own life, uh, God has done so much for me. If I don't give it away, I feel like I'm kind of stealing from God. And you, you obviously have learned that lesson as well and, and are impacting so many people for sure. We're going to get to some. Justin, we'll continue. To, we'll hear more uh, of your career, your story, how faith has shaped you. But we certainly want our, our listeners to have access to you. It's Justin Spire. He was 10 years in a Major League Baseball. We're talking about sports and life and faith today on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie at 1-800-585-9396. Please join us as Maggie has done from Des Moines listening on Iowa Catholic Radio. Maggie, how are you today? Good. Doing well. Good. Well, thank you. Uh, my my question is, um, I have four children. My two older sons are um, sports 
fanatics. We go from baseball to football to basketball to repeat. No break in between. And, um, it, you know, it's a bit much. We've, we've got four, and we've got two that are kind of in that realm right now. And we're just we're struggling with balance. We're in a bigger community, and if you don't play uh, early on, then you won't get an opportunity to play in high school, unfortunately. And so we're struggling with how much is too much, and we also don't want them to burn out. Um, and so we just we just don't know what what line we draw. Justin, oh wow, that's a great question. I mean, and that's and that's sort of. Uh... That's sort of in the competitive spirit of our great of our great country, you know. Um, when I was growing up, my dad played Major League Baseball, and he never pushed it on on us. Um, my mom never pushed sports on us. They sort of let us as children find our own way, and 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 we wanted it to be fun. And uh, when, especially when kids are younger, um, you want them, you want it to be fun for them. And so, um, there's a lot of coaches, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of coaches that are driving these kids to succeed and wanting to, them to succeed at such a young age because there's scholarships out there and there's opportunities out there at the next level. And so it's really sometimes coming in the way of the enjoyment of the sport. So I always say if it's not fun anymore, um, it, it will burn a kid out. You know, I got burned out in baseball a little bit, and I played for you know a long time, and it was a passion of mine. And uh, I really enjoyed it, you know, and I, and I think ultimately it needs to continue to be sports needs to be continue to be a passion. And, um, do you ever go to any Des Moines, Iowa baseball games out there? I, uh, I, uh, came up in the, in, in Des Moines. I love that city. Oh, yeah. We, we are a, a frequent visitor of the Iowa Cubs. Yes. My boys love to go and we, uh, we make several trips during the summer to the games. Absolutely. I would have been there many years ago when my knees were good and I didn't have gray hair. I would have probably been out there pitching. So uh, it's uh, it's always fun to it's always fun to go to the ballpark with the family and uh, and professional game. But yeah, that's it's a, it's a fine enjoyment and passion, and then having it become a job, especially at a young age. I, I don't think we should ever push our kids to um, have sports be be a way of them you know relaxing from a strenuous you know homework schedule or uh you know um but but it's 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 hard though because there's so many more opportunities if they if they are athletically gifted at the high school and college level to get scholarships so uh those opportunities are out there too so it's a, it's a fine just- balance Right. A fine balance. Exactly. And Justin, you just gave some great advice, Maggie. I hope that, you know, truly um, can assist you in raising your children in, and in sports. And also, Maggie, don't forget that the picture that Justin's talking about is on take two show.com and you can actually see it there because that's fascinating as well. And I think it's, it's important to impart to our children early on that faith matters. I mean, Justin, I, I keep thinking about, I, I remember the old days where I used to put JMJ on the top of our paper before we would submit them in. And I just, when to think, Justin, that you used to do that on the mound, you would actually write JMJ. Well, that's definitely coming from your Catholic school education. I love it. Absolutely love it. So, Maggie, thank you for making the time and calling in and speaking to all of us and especially to our guest, Justin Spire. Uh, this is a great show, Jerry. I am, lo- I'm, you know what? I always take notes, but now I've got two pages full and we haven't even finished the first part of the show. <laughs> one eight eight five nine three nine six if you would like to weigh in with your take on this topic kids involvement in sports maybe your maybe your own i i was one of those uh it wasn't year round necessarily but during the school year yeah i played football in the fall basketball and track and i tried to combine track and baseball and i was in little league and i gotta i gotta tell you my p- parents divorced single mom with five kids uh, she rarely missed a, a sporting event or a school play or anything like that so uh, moms and dads uh, do a fantastic job but uh, we we again ask that question you know when is it maybe too much uh, and, and and also what about kids who just kind of want to be couch potatoes and play video games and you want them to get out there be active not so sedentary so we can talk about all these things the lessons we 
sports, how they apply especially to our faith at one 800 585-9396. We're going to go to Donald next. Donald is in Lawton, Oklahoma, listening on EWTN.com. Hello, Donald. Hi. Thanks for uh, calling. I wanted to make a comment. Um, I played uh, baseball and football way back uh, in, the, in the 60s. And, uh, but I brought my own sort of moral code uh, to those, I think I added more to it than I got out of it, but I, I couldn't conquer my anger, uh, which I've held on to for a long time. And now that I'm in my 60s, I, I started uh, training horses, my own horses, just two of them. And uh, really, I've only gotten one fully, almost fully trained. But the thing that that I learned from that, and maybe if we could get kids to do this if they had the right teachers, is uh, training horses teaches you such patience and. The realization that uh, they're just horses. They're going to do what they're going to do, and you can't get mad at them for that. And we could, we could bring that into how we treat other people. People are just people, and they're going to do certain things based on certain stimuli. So that, that was just my comment. Wow, that's profound. Justin, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I, I love it. I think I, I think I figured it out. I need to work with horses so that way I could uh, <laughs> maintain my patience on the golf course. <laughs> yeah what, what we got a new saying i was wondering if you could help me help straighten my drive out i'm playing that army golf right now left right left right and i'm all oh, over no. the course right now oh bless your heart i know that is frustrating golf can be frustrating it's you know it's so joyful at times but other times it just can it can really hit to the core and really strike a nerve in all different directions so um i can relate but you know justin the practice makes well, the the old saying is practice makes perfect, but you know, practice, practice. Golf works if you keep practicing. So it's in all in the journey with golf, Justin. Totally. Yes, <laughs> yes. Je- I, can I ask a quick question? I've always watched baseball, um, where the, the the baseball players, the major league baseball players, there was a lot of, I guess, adrenaline. Fl- you know, I, you know, sometimes they'd get into fights and stuff. I mean, Justin, can you impart real quickly what, um, you know, how? How do they cope with the kind of quick anger? Oh, that's a tough one because it is a competitive sport and you're out there with your emotions and pumping, you're you're pitching and you're pitching and you're playing in front of 50,000 people. So um, feelings and emotions can, can crop up at any time. You know, as a pitcher, I wanted to make sure that I own the inside part of the plate. And every so often I would throw the ball close to make them a little bit uncomfortable. And a lot of hitters did not like that. They felt like they were, I was challenging, I was mm-hmm. challenging them as a man. It, 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 it goes to respect. It goes to um, a lot of different things. A lot of a lot of people second base and they uh, try to take out the second baseman. A lot of, uh, there's a lot of contact in baseball, believe it or not. Um, and, uh, and so with that, with that adrenaline and with that intensity, comes irritation, anger, and being able to let things go. Um, you know, um, as a pitcher, whether I made a good pitch or a bad pitch, I always had to focus on the next pitch. I couldn't let the, I couldn't let the last one affect me. I couldn't let the next one. I, I had to just focus on that one at a time, that one play at a time. Um, and just like in life, you know, like Christ a- asks us to live in the daily moment. I. I, I get so worried when I think about my tomorrows, you know, and, hey, am I going to be ready to have this child, and we're going to have a boy, and we get, do we got the baby crib ready? And Christ says, hey, give us today our daily bread. You know, he said, um, mm-hmm. don't look on tomorrow or don't look on yesterday. Focus on today. And it's just like in sports, we need a here and now and the present moment, the perfect present moment. So um, to answer your question, yeah, there was a lot of, there was a lot of anger and irritation on the baseball field. Um, I didn't always, I didn't always succeed as a Christian man in in that area. You know, um, I right there for just a, just a second, Justin. Sorry about that. The music means we're going to a break, and this is the one hard break during the show, meaning uh, we don't have a, a choice of when to take it. So my apologies that thought but boy great great lessons for life when we sin when we fall down do we get right back up and get back at it 
I honestly can't even picture my life without EWTN. You can get every need met between radio, television, internet. God bless you. Never let EWTN go by the wayside. If you have a comment about our programming, we'd love to hear from you too. Call 205-795-5773 or send us an email at EWTN.com. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you. Web of Faith 2.0. It's your tried and true source for the interactive answers you need. Father John Trujillo and Father Ken Berganti answer the tough questions from the EWTN.com website. From philosophy to apologetics to church history, we've heard it all. But the questions never get old because the truth never gets old. User-friendly answers in a faith-friendly forum. All new episodes of Web of Faith 2.0 here on the Global Catholic Network. EWTN. EWTN Radio is drawing people of all races, nations, and walks of life to the life of Christ. My father has a physical disability. Because of that, he cannot always make it to the Mass. Since to EWTN's airing the daily Mass, he's right there following along. With satellite radio, I can listen to any show on EWTN's Catholic programming. EWTN, truly the global Catholic radio network. What's stopping you from becoming a Catholic? Why can't women become priests? I don't understand why I have to earn salvation. How is it possible that God created everything? Why do I need to confess my sins to why a priest? Why is the Catholic Church so unwilling to wreck the Catholic Church is too rich? Catholics worship Mary and our community. As far as I'm concerned, all religions are equal. You are called to communion with Dr. David Anders. Today, 2 p.m. Eastern, on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Being with us on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Debbie, we heard from your friend Tom in uh, the Phoenix area listening to the program and enjoying the conversation with Justin Spire. Justin is with us here, former Major League Baseball pitcher, uh, recently married to Brittany and their uh, their son, their first child, is on the way. So anybody would like to talk with Justin, and, and we're discussing sports, its connection to life, how our faith really can be seen on the athletic field, whatever sport that might be. And uh, Donald's uh, contribution to the show a few minutes ago uh, made me want to encourage uh, coaches. If you're a coach of sports, call in because you're the one. I don't know that I would have the patience to be a coach because, I don't know, I, I'm not a... <laughs> I don't think I'm that good of a teacher, Debbie, because when I'm trying to impart something to somebody, it's like, okay, I already know this, and why aren't you getting it, and why aren't you, you know, picking this up on all this stuff? It takes a lot of patience. So, coach, uh, especially of young players, give us a call, and you can uh, chat with Justin Spire here at one eight hundred. Five eight five nine three nine six. We have uh, other calls we're going to get to, starting with Lori. Lori is in Jacksonville, Oregon. Lori, thank you for calling. Take two with Jerry and Debbie. Hi, Lori. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. You're on the air, Lori. Oh, Justin, it's Aunt Lori. I just wanted oh to. Oh my you. gosh, it's my Aunt Lori. How you doing, Aunt Lori? <laughs> I'm good, sweetie. I'm so proud of you. I've been listening to the program, and I just want to say to everybody out there that are listening that my nephew is one big inspiration to me. My mm-hmm. my nephew Justin Spire is a wonderful, loving, God loving. Man, and I can't wait for little baby Justin to be born. God bless you, Justin, and Brittany, and the baby, and I pray for you every day, sweetie. And um, it was so good to see you right before Grandpa's 90th. And I just can't say enough about my nephew. I just love you so much. And I want to thank oh, you so much. Thank you so much, Aunt Lori. You're, that's so sweet of you. I'll, uh, that's so sweet of you. You're, Send her a signed so, baseball so or something. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, you're so you're so kind, Aunt Lori. You're so kind. This is such a nice compliment. Thank you so much. Well, Justin, you are so blessed with a very big, beautiful family. I I I do know family very well. Um, I absolutely love your mom, Alita, and. Um, you're you're so blessed. You have so much love around you, and your new uh, baby boy that's coming into the world is going to be so loved and and such a blessing. But before the break, Justin, I wanted to you and and also all of our dear listeners that you you imparted such wisdom. I mean, I, I could not type fast enough on 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 things you were saying, and and Justin, your. Your life is is your life and your sports career is truly a witness to all of us, and and so now it makes complete sense that you do go around uh, to uh, local uh, Catholic youth groups and college campuses and share your testimony. You really are a living witness, and you're trying to really help our future generations. Uh, so so I I agree with your aunt Lori. You're an inspiration to to all of us. Thank you for being on the show today, and thank you for teaching us and and sharing with us. Oh, thank you so much, Debbie. I appreciate it, you know. And my Aunt Lori, she's so sweet. She's just got such a tender heart, and I appreciate all the family and all the friends that have loved me and, and given me this gift of faith. You know, um, my mom has been instrumental. My dad has been instrumental in my life and is imparting my ca- Catholic faith down to me so that way I could um, make an impact in people's lives. And, you know, you know, I wasn't that good in in high school, and I wasn't that good in college and baseball, but I had this belief and this passion that, I had this purpose in life to do something, and for me, it was playing baseball. And every kid out there that's maybe listening, just know that God has a purpose and a passion for for you. And you just ask you have to ask Him in your prayer, whether it's the Rosary, whether it's the, I love this new prayer, the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. I love that prayer, how we pray for the souls, not only our souls but other people's souls. Um, at the beginning of the show, I think it's important for us to pray. Where two or more are gathered, we need to pray. The enemy wants us not to pray. He doesn't want us in community. He wants us in isolation. So when we're in community, when we're together, when we're worshiping together and praying together as a family, um, that's where the Holy Spirit is sort of um, unleashed. And we need to unleash the Holy Spirit in our lives, not only in our athletic careers, but in our lives. And I know that I wasn't that good in high school and college, but God gave me this this unbelievable ability to play baseball later in life. I didn't know until later, and I was drafted in the 56th round. I think there was a couple of general managers' daughters that were drafted, and <laughs> and I think that and I think and I made it to the big leagues, and I got to play for a long period of time. And you know, um, we're only here at this on this planet for a short period of time, and we need to affect and evangelize um, ourselves. We need to evangelize right. others. We need to. We need to continue to spread the gospel into other people's hearts and minds. Mm-hmm. And it said, they said it takes a village to raise a child. So we need to continue to um, we need to continue to pray for our right. children, and right. we need to continue to bring the gospel into places that may be a little uncomfortable. Um, mm-hmm. I get to go and speak at public schools um, openly about my faith, and you know they're taking Christ out of public schools now. And it's important for us to go into places like Paul did. He went into Rome, and they said, don't go into Rome, man. You're going to you're gonna get killed. <laughs> and, you know, they, they, he eventually did, you know, but what an amazing man. He had this faith to go and take the gospel, not only right. to churches, but outside of the church, because we are the church as Catholic people, and we need to take the gospel outside of the church. You know, it's easy to speak about our faith to other Christians because we're so open with it, but we need to be bold with our faith as Catholic Christians, and we need to be able to speak always, and sometimes use words, as St. Francis said, and, um, or no, preach always, and sometimes use words, as St. Francis said, so just by yeah. our actions. Yeah. And as an, as an athlete, I think it was our by our actions that were measured. You know, if we could go out and play whatever sport with intensity and purpose and show our teammates that no matter what ability God has given us, that we're going to play with that same intensity and that same, um, the same desire to be right. excellent in everything right. we do. So, and, yeah, um, and for the glory of God too. For the glory of God. I mean, you totally for the glory of God. Yeah. And and we and, and lead with our actions, not with our words. 
And so um, today we get a lead with our words because it is a radio show, and I look a lot better on than I do on TV. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Justin, you look great. But wait, we've got it. Th- your aunt Lori is uh, is is still on the line, and she's listening. And we just want to thank her so very much for taking the time to call in and share with all of us how Justin is an inspiration in your family and your in your life, Lori, and also to all of us. So, thank you, Lori, for calling in, Justin. We're going to move on because the phone lines are are really filling up, and we, we want to go to Denny, who's been waiting so patiently in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Hi, Denny. How are you? Very good. How are you today? Doing well. Thank you so much. You're on the air with Jerry and Debbie and Justin Spire. Well, it's great to talk to all of you. Um, in the beginning of the show, Justin made a comment about um, sports being it's not fun. They shouldn't be doing it. And uh, I think that that's so important, but what I really think is important for parents is that, that they talk to about having fun and not just about doing all the drills and doing everything right And because we're never going to, Justin know she'd never get a hit every time. You know, you never field every ground ball, but when you do do it right, it's, it's so much fun. Um, I played baseball a little bit in college. Um, I, I had the opportunity to do coach with a gentleman who is just an amazing coach. And we, the best time I had coaching and the best time I had playing was when everybody was out there just having fun, not, not doing it as a job. And I think it's yeah. really important for us to talk to the kids about that. Denny, you're, you're, you're hitting on something that is so important, and, and Justin, I want your thoughts on this, but, and Justin, you know firsthand of, of what I'm about to say, and that is nobody's life is sports. You may have a career in sports, but it, what's the percentage of young kids who go through youth sports in high school, maybe even college, and actually end up making a career of it and making a living out of it. So, uh, Justin, talk for a minute about the, the lessons that we can learn that we apply to our lives and to our faith, how those are going to be, uh, you know, we'll be able to use those throughout the rest of our lives, whereas sports at some point is going to come to an end in our lives, at least competitive, uh, you know, maybe professional sports. No, the, you know, that makes a great point. I think especially all the way up until eighth grade, sports needs to be it needs to be fun. It needs to be enjoyable for kids. Um, Denny, you made a great point about, you know, the uh, the fact that sports can be very frustrating. It can be very um, challenging. You don't succeed all the time, but sometimes in our failures, we find out who what we're made of the most and whether we get back up and we continue to strive for the next at bat, the next football play, the next basketball um, play whatever whatever sport it may be. Um, I think in high school, a little implement of work is is necessary. I think that's when kids are able to um, and make work fun. I mean, now granted, sports for me was fun all the way through, and I enjoyed parts of the the aspect of the work. When I became a professional, you know, you have the massage therapist, you have the you know the the psychological coach, you have the trainers, you have the acupuncturist. You're working out, you're lifting weights, you're preparing your body, mind, and soul um, to, to go out and perform for maybe a very short period of time. I was usually probably out there pitching for maybe 10 minutes every other day. So all this stuff leading into 10 minutes of um, actual competing um, was a lot of work, but I actually enjoyed the work. So I think at some point there, it is okay to enjoy the work of sport. And when at that at, when it, when at that point every kid is going to be different, and as parents we have to um, uh, push our kids a little bit when they need to be pushed, but then ease up when they don't need to be pushed. So um, when they're young, it should be about fun and it should be about enjoyment. When they get to high school and they get to a little bit more of a competitive age, some of the work can be fun. It can be rewarding, especially when they put in some work. And then they see results from that work. Um, Denny made a good point about not everybody on a team is going to be the best player on the team. For me, I wasn't the best player on the team. And that's great because it teaches you self-sacrifice. It teaches you how to be a good teammate. It teaches you to take excitement out of the success of other people. 
Um, when I was playing, I was one of the best relief pitchers for about seven or eight years. But towards the end of my career, some of the young guys came up, and I had to Im- impart some of my wisdom on them and, and just really give them some of the experiences. So I actually took enjoyment in their success, even though they were taking my own job. So, you know, I think a little bit of work at the right period of time for our youth is okay. Uh, you just got to really have a feel as a parent for when that, when that time is. If your kid seems to be having fun with the work, then, then go ahead, push them. Push them towards the work of sport. Um, but, you know, so, you know, a lot of kids are resistant, will get resistant to that pushing and then that prodding. And, and that's when we need to ease up as parents and, and, and really it has to be the, the enjoyment of the sport. Denny, thanks for your call, and everything, Justin, that you just said could be applied to the spiritual life as well. When we're raising kids, uh, you want to encourage them. You want them, of course, you require them maybe to go to Mass and to, and to say family prayers and so forth, but just with regard to their own specific spirituality and how that develops, it's really just, I think, create an environment of openness on their part without pushing and let the Holy Spirit kind of come in and, and do the rest. So we got to get a, a short break here. We will continue with Justin Spire. It's Take Two with Jerry and Debbie, UTN Global Catholic Radio Network. More of your calls after this short break. Tomorrow on the show, we've titled it, Tony, Tony, Let's Go. <laughs> Have you ever had St. Anthony help you find something? We're going to talk tomorrow on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. But more of your calls on this of faith and sports and life coming right up. Stay with us. Sixty seconds with Mother Angelica. We have to stop this abortion. We have to stop murdering babies by law. We have to educate our children in the ways of God, not the ways of sex and the ways of dr- of drugs. You say, well, now, Mother, we're not teaching them in the ways of sex. Oh, yes, you are when you start third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade. You don't fill your minds with that. At that age, you fill your minds with God. And you can give me all the reasons why they have to, they don't have to know. What do they have to know? You don't teach them the Trinity. Too young for the Trinity. But they're not too young for the stuff you're giving them. The people you know and trust are on EWTN. Welcome back, friends, to Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Our special guest today talking about sports is former Major League Baseball player Justin Spire. And Justin, I have to tell you, the phone lines are completely uh, filling up and, and full, I would say. So I don't know if we're going to get to everybody. So we're going we're gonna to move this along. We're going to go to our next caller, Sandy, from Dover, Ohio. Hi, Sandy, listening on iHeartRadio app. Hi, how are you today? Good. Oh, you sound so joyful, Sandy. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you very Good. much. Good. You, you're on with Justin Spire and Jerry and, and me. Hi. Um, I'm calling in reference to the young mother who had four children, and two of them are actively playing sports all year long. My husband and I raised three children that played sports all year long. They are now... Um, One's married, one's in the army, one plays for Ohio State football, thank God, underneath Urban Meyer. Mm. But when they were young, my husband insisted that regardless of what the tournament schedule was or what the travel schedule was, that we went to Mass as a family. And most of the time, we would end up with other children who were or weren't Catholic, and other parents who were and weren't Catholic going to Mass with us. And we Hmm. never had a coach argue with us, even if it meant we got to the game and missed the first inning or, you know, football is not really a problem, but an issue. And it was never an arguing point either. We were going to do it, and every coach knew it. 
And no Justin, what's, what's your take on this? Because uh, obviously, you know, Major League Baseball players travel. You travel all the time. You're, you're mm. playing on weekends. So first, just your thoughts in general about the importance of, of making sure, you know, parents get their kids to. Maybe you can throw in a little bit about how you and, and your fellow athletes that were Catholics and needed to get to Mass dealt with that. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Um, I, I, I had to go to Mass. I mean, it was I, I actually got a permission from a few priests that because we played on Sunday and we did a lot of traveling that um, if I went to Mass during the week, that would sort of go for my uh, Sunday obligation. But for me, I had to go to Mass. It was important to me to go to Mass, whether I had to wake up at 7 o'clock and go to the early Mass and then play in a day game that day. We usually play day games on Sundays, but for me, I had to go to Mass. And then um, it was cool because we had a uh, baseball chapel with, with with a lot of my non-denominational teammates who were my livelihood. They were my strength. Um, they kept me on the straight and narrow. Um, uh, we didn't have all Catholics on our, on our team, so we had a lot of evangelicals. And we went to baseball chapel. We prayed together, and we just focused on Christ. It was a beautiful thing. We um, we uh, focused on Jesus and on our relationship with Christ, and uh, they really helped me um, in my faith walk. You know, um, as a Catholic growing up, I didn't spend too much time in the Word, <laughs> and, and 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 they really, really um, in, incorporated an unbelievable uh, getting into the Word of God and knowing that the Word of God. Is, is instilled in my heart, is instilled in my mind. And um, I think it's hugely important for a family to um, focus on Christ first. And if we're going to focus on God first, we should get to church on Sunday. That's, that's first and foremost, you know. And what, a, what an amazing testimony that the mother um, that just called in, she, she was able to bring her family to church, her and her husband, and they were actually evangelizing at the same time. They were... Mm-hmm other non-Catholics and other people who of different faiths, they would go to church with them, and that's a beautiful thing to be able to do. And um, and that's a, that's a great testimony. I'm glad you called in. Yeah, Sandy, thanks for a great contribution to Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. We appreciate that very much. God will, and, and I'm, certainly, uh, cer- I'm certain that he has blessed you for your efforts to make sure that you and your family went to Mass. Next stop is uh, Iowa. Boy, we get a lot of Iowa Catholic Radio. Adam is up next. Adam, thanks for the program. What's on your mind today? Um, yes, I'm calling. Um, I am currently a coach. I've been coaching for quite a while. Um, I just wanted to get his insight on team. Uh, one of the things we really push with our kids is you know, team first, which I really think is a good relation to um, to what we try and teach as Catholics um, is the selflessness of it. You know, is that when we have families, we you know, put the family first. When we our faith, we put our faith first. Um, in team sports, we really try and emphasize team first. And then the second one is the challenges. Um, a lot of uh, parallels, and I know I use this with my kids all the time, is, um, you know, we, we face challenges. We get beat. We, you know, there's somebody who's beating our spot out. Um, is um, the response to that and um, how much that this actually correlates to life is when, you know, bad things happen and very often we see it, you know, why does God let this happen? Well, you know, the challenges and the way this pushes us to become better people, I think, is is one of the answers to that. And I would honestly like his, his insights on um, just how, how that developed through um, his progress through, through baseball is that emphasis of team because Team, um, obviously, baseball is a really team-oriented sport. Yeah, Justin, I'm sure you've got. There's probably a lot you could say about that. We've got about two minutes, though, but I'm sure you can impart some uh, good words of wisdom to Adam. I, well, you know, Adam's phone was was cutting out a little bit. I didn't hear all of what he said. Um, Jerry, can you handle that one? Did you hear everything that he said? Well, yeah, he was talking about uh, he's a coach, and they like to put team first, uh, emphasize this this selfless attitude. You already alluded to it a little bit, especially later in your career. But how did that uh, you know that selfless approach? Uh, how how did that uh, progress or help you along as you uh, went through the different levels of professional baseball? You know, it's all, for me, it was dying to my ego and pride, which I'm continuing to try to do. I, I believe ego is edging God out, E-G-O, edging God out. So when I die to my ego and I realize that, you know, a team is something bigger than myself, 
um, I have the interest of my teammates, interest of um, the whole, the collective group. So, um, you know, I, I love what he said about keeping God first and keeping team first. You know, if we're living out of the center, if we're living out of Christ and he lives within us, everything we do is out of the center of our lives. So everything's going to be from from his spirit. So um, uh, keeping God number one and keeping him the center of our life, well, we're going to exemplify his mercy, grace, and love in everything that we do. So, you know, and that's repenting and dying and dying to our sin and then being sanctified and then continuing to um, be good teammates and be good role models in our spiritual life also. Jerry made a good point earlier about our spiritual walk is, is parallels to our uh, our athletic career, you know, um, and and uh, I think I think that us as Catholic Christians need to continue to uh, um, live out of the center of our lives and keep God number one and uh, keep team number one also. That's a great point. Very good, Adam. Thanks for the call. We're going to get to Paul in Phoenix. Paul, um, unfortunately, we, we will get you on the air, but you got about 15 seconds to try and make it real brief. We just wanted to fit you into the program. How I are you, Paul? I saying I can... Hi, Paul. Hey, Debbie. How you doing? Hey, I just want to say thanks to everyone. I know time's really short here, but I just want to say thanks to you and Jay for having Justin on the air this morning. I've had the blessing of knowing him for almost a year, and I can tell all of your listeners that this man is the real deal and he's just an awesome awesome man of god so thank you so much justin for being on the air this morning buddy hey thank you paul i appreciate it but paul have you golfed with him that's what i want to know (laughs) i have not yet had the pleasure to do that and i'm not so sure that i would want to i just don't want to be taken to school that badly (laughs) paul thanks for that i'm going to need like a team of priests so i could do confessions between each hole you know (laughs) Thanks, Paul. Uh, Justin, it's been great having you on. Blessings to you. Uh, We've got to have you back on the program again sometime. Great contribution. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys. I appreciate all you do for the glory of God and continue the Holy Spirit to work through you. God bless you both. Thanks. Thank we'll you, we'll pray for each other. Debbie, your takeaway. Yes, well, early congratulations to Justin on, be- on to become a father real soon. We're so excited for you. Justin, I'll take you on the golf course sometime with that Christian assistance I'll give you on the golf course. And my takeaway <laughs> is, my takeaway is, be proud to be Christian in sports. How about yours, Jerry? And my takeaway is we can learn way more than we imagine through sports and apply it to our lives and our spiritual lives especially. Take two with Jerry and Debbie. Uh, we're back on at midnight Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific tonight, a re-airing of this show. Tomorrow has St. Anthony's. We'll talk about that.